I'm about to save you a lot of time. Recently, I upgraded the ant D library from version three to four. Now, I can't show you the exact code changes because I did that for the company I work for. But what I can do is I can show you simplified examples of what I did exactly. So in this video, I'll show you changes to components, including deprecation fixes, which are optional, but still are good to do because in further versions, those deprecation warnings will turn into errors. TypeScript error fixes and test fixes. By the way, I'm using React testing library. So let's start with changes to components. The first step is checking out the official migration guide. I'll leave the link down in the description. So this basically covers the prerequisites, what was deprecated, what was changed, and also shows you example of how to upgrade your components. It's pretty accurate. It helped me a lot. So I highly recommend you check it out first. Just wanted to show you a couple of examples of what type of changes you will have to make to your components. So, and by the way, I hope you excuse the red line. I just pasted code in a new file. So uh, the first change is for the button component. So danger is no longer an available type. You have to pass in danger as a new component, uh, sorry, as a new prop to the button component. The next example, icon. This is the old way of using icons. This is the new way for N4. You just have to import a whole component and that, that component is the icon. And last change I, I wanted to show com, combines those two, sort of. So if you want to display an icon in, inside of a button, you would have to do it like this in N3, which is passing a string. In N4, you have to import that icon and then put it in that icon prop. One thing I did want to mention is how to create forms in N4 as compared to N3. So let me start with N3 first. It's this file on the left here. Let me start from the bottom, actually. I call the form.create function and I pass in the login form, which is my component. Because of that, I have the form prop available to me and out of it, I extract the get fields decorator function and I use it this way. Lastly, this from prop, or sorry, <laughs> form prop has the validate fields function that accepts a callback. And inside of that callback, I call the unsubmit function that actually submits my username and password. Now let's compare that to N4. Let's start from the bottom as well. As you can see, there's no form that create function here. Instead, I call the use form hook. Now, if your if if your component is a class, I recommend you change it to a function. I name the result of that hook form and I pass it in inside the form component as the form prop. I don't extract the gate field decorator out of this form object here. So this is how my form item looks like. It's much more straightforward. One thing to note is that the unfinished prop was previously known as unsubmit. And speaking of submitting, the validate fields function is still available from the form object, but this time it returns a promise that I can await. And then I call my unsubmit function that actually submits the username and password. Another issue that I had was with Cascader. Now, how Cascader works is that by default, it renders a dropdown. You click the dropdown and you see the options you passed in. You can also provide your own component. So if I provide a button, it gets rendered. And when I click it, I see the options, right? So the problem that I had was that this button was being wrapped by a permissions component. So this permissions com component, as you can see here, it's very simplified. It was much more complex in the actual code, but just for the sake of, of the example, uh, I made it more simple. So there's the enable prop. And if it's true, whatever I pass in, so the child, right, gets cloned 
and the props except for en enabled and children are being passed into that clone now the issue with that is this doesn't work <laughs> so what i did is i essentially made sure that only the button will be provided into my cascader and i extracted all of this permissions logic out now this was the best solution that i could find if you know a better solution please let me know fixing deprecation warnings is very straightforward all of them are listed in the console in the dev tools a lot of them are uh, prop name has changed so for example in modals uh in Ant3, you would pass in the prop called visible. Now the same prop is called open, stuff like that. Uh, the most notable warnings though is uh, around the menu and tabs component. So in Ant3 or b below 420, you would uh, create menu item components or menu dot sub menu components. Now you just pass in items, which is just an array of regular objects and that's for the menu component and the same goes for the tab component now let's talk about the typescript error fixes unfortunately and sucks when it comes to exporting the types so i had to dig into the ant package and also its dependencies uh, so let's take a look at click param click param was the type of the event available to you when you were using the on click prop for the menu component. Now the event is off menu info type. It's available from this path here. RC menu is one of the dependencies used by Ant, by the way. Another one, modal funk is no longer available from this path. It was moved to this uh, folder here or file here. Slider value, similarly to the uh, click param above, uh, it was used by the slider component and it was the, the type of the value being available to you when you use the on change. Now, uh, this, this is just a regular number, so you don't have to import the slider value. I don't think it's even, I think it was removed anyway, so. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about refs and here I had the biggest issues. So carousel is no longer a valid uh, thing to be passed as the type of your ref. You have to import the carousel ref separately from this path. For popover, I'm going to be 100% honest, I couldn't find a suitable replacement. So I just decided to ignore it. Input. I have to import a different ref because input is no longer a valid, I guess, type to be passed into my, uh, well, to be used as my ref. I have to import it from this, uh, this path. Same goes for select. It cannot just be used as the type of my ref. I have to import base select ref from RC select. Fixing the tests. So this is relevant to you if you're using Jest and a React testing library. I had to use a polyfill because some of my tests were broken because there was an error like cannot uh, call or invoke add listener on undefined, something like that. There is a link explaining what the issue is and why this fixes it. So essentially you have to put it inside of the Jest setup file. So also a lot of the tests were being broken because the fire event that click didn't work properly. Changing click to mouse down worked sometimes, but what worked in all cases and in all times was using the user event library. So give it a shot. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you and I'll see you next time. Peace.